Again, Seven Days of Science is late this week, as announced on our Twitter. But it's all over now, the end of my exams. But not the end of work, of course, no. In fact, check out my blog article, link in the description. Terms and conditions apply. Battery Starting off the news this week, the UK government has pledged to reduce all greenhouse gas emissions to net zero by 2050. While this may not mean that the UK will produce no greenhouse gas emissions by 2050, any that are produced will be offset by the plantation of trees. This follows advice from the Committee on Climate Change in May to hit the net zero target by 2050. The report states that if other countries follow the UK, then there is a 50-50 chance that the planet will stay below the 1.5 degree temperature increase. The 1.5 degree temperature increase by 2100, a figure that if exceeded is seen as dangerous levels of climate change. Prime Minister Theresa May said it was appropriate for the UK to lead the world away from fossil fuels as it had led the world into them. Starting off the paleontology news, a new genus and species of crocodiliform, specifically a palligatorid, has been named. These animals are extinct relatives of living crocodilians, and this new taxon, called Scholomastax salsteini, comes from late Cretaceous rocks in northern Texas. The species is only known from a part of mandible, but it clearly shows adaptations of being capable of biting through tough foods, and of being omnivorous. Additionally, palligatorids are primarily known from fossils unearthed in Asia, so the fact that Scholomastax was located on the landmass of Appalachia supports the idea of a connection between North America and Asia before the Western Interior Seaway appeared. Next, some news that is not technically in the last seven days, but it was really cool and for some reason we missed it. The announcement of the discovery of a 40,000 year old wolf head from Siberia. Found in 2018, the head is 40 centimeters long and the animal it belonged to would have been between two and four years old when it died. Many of the soft tissues, and even the brain, are in relatively good condition, and researchers from Russia, Japan and Sweden are all going to be examining the DNA of the creature, and using a CT scanner have already looked inside the head. Alongside the wolf head, a previously announced discovery of a preserved cave lion cub was also displayed. Also this week, the evolutionary relationships of sloths have had a bit of a shake-up. A study published in Nature Ecology and Evolution has taken preserved collagen from fossil bones of sloths, and by sequencing the proteins a clearer picture of sloth evolution has emerged. Instead of the modern two-toed sloth genus grouping with Megalonychidae as before, they are now placed within Mylodontidae. The three-toed sloth genus is now grouped with Megalonyx, with both as Megatherioids, and Tillian sloths have been moved to a more basal position. This rearrangement further supports the idea that the living sloths separately evolved their similar lifestyles and morphologies from ground-dwelling ancestors, and just as this paper was published, another study, using mitochondrial DNA evidence, was also published independent of this one, and came to some very similar conclusions, therefore proving paleoproteomics, or the study of ancient proteins, as an effective way to reconstruct phylogenies. Next up, some trilobite news. A new paper in Nature was published this week that has examined the internal eye structure of two trilobite genera, which has previously only been done in one other species. The results of the study found that these organisms' eyes showed a lot of similarities to myriapods, hexapods and crustaceans, and it's therefore proposed that this is evidence of trilobites being members of stem mandibulata, whereas before they've been placed as part of stem chelicerata, the group including arachnids or as stem urethropods. However, trilobite relationships within Arthropoda are still unclear, and more research is needed. And finally this week, a pretty cool paper on pterosaurs has just been published. The fossils of 19 pterosaur embryos were described from China and Argentina, and the examination of these specimens has revealed that some of them were at relatively late developmental stages and about to be born when they became fossilised. The fossils represent four different species, and remarkably there are signs that these babies, or flaplings as they're very technically called, would have been fully capable of flight as soon as they are hatched. These signs include the ossification of vertebrae and limb girdles, and this condition of being highly developed when first born, known as precocial, suggests that parental care in pterosaurs, though there is still a possibility, was not needed for the offspring to survive. 
Thank you very much for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it, and feel free to subscribe if you want to learn more about this world, its history, or the wonderful life that surrounds you. And if you have already, we'll see you on Sunday.